another sign of the time is the facilities have improved so much over the years. What do we think? Are they first of all? Are they competing with one another, these Grand oh, Slams, yeah. for yeah. big time? Yeah. <laughs> and have they, have they sort of leveled out the playing field or are getting close to it now with Roland Garros improving the, the Philippe Chatrier, putting roofs on there? Uh, and then, of course, Australian Open has taken. Is it more even now between the four than, let's say, in the 80s, where I have a feeling you guys would say uh, Wimbledon was maybe number one. You would most probably be up in the air with the US Open Wimbledon. Well, right, I but think today, I, yeah. are they more even today than, I, well, than I, ever before? I, I would say they're more even than ever before. I think Australia made a lot of renovations and changes sooner out of necessity because it just wasn't happening for yeah. them. You know, they weren't getting all the players, which was a great move. Moving away from where they used to play at Kuyong and yeah. grass to the new facility, which is they've turned into a whole entertainment center. It's not even tennis. And the French always has this great tradition was a and will always be this tremendous event. But for someone in the States, it's not as important as Wimbledon, which is sort of Augusta, you know, the masters of golf, or it's far away, unbelievable place. And me being from New York, the US Open, and I, I mean, I'm biased, but I think it's the best city in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so- oh, Only a New Yorker can say New York, that. Yeah. And, and, and there's something incredible, the energy there. So. I think the other ones have worked hard to, to catch up and they're closer, but it's hard for me to think that Wimbledon, the Open, mm. uh, they're just something about, they've, they, they've always had an edge in, in my book. But I think it all started with Australia. I think they changed the rule book. They wanted to become important, they, would, they wanted to matter, and they were the first one with the mm -hmm. roof. Mm -hmm. and, and they were the first one with, with you know, spacious facilities for players, coaches, and everybody else to the point where it's probably the most popular Grand Slam of all of four is everybody's looking to come to Melbourne beginning of the year because of you know, infrastructure and, and the facilities and, and the way they have to included the night session. You know, in New York had it for us, but with the, with the roof there, I mean, it's, it's a great match. You know, 8 o'clock on, on, on Rod Laver, it's just a match you, you want to go to and, and see. And I think because of that, everybody else stepped up on the plate. Wimbledon was the second one with the roof. You know, that took a long time. And then in New York, which I thought was an impossible scenario, building on, on Louis Armstrong a roof. I mean, it's the biggest court in the world. I don't know how they've done it. So a night session mm. in New York is magic. Mm. I mean, that's why you want to play tennis. Mm. And now the French have to follow. Yes, I, I respect their culture and the mentality and the facilities are great. I think they've done a great job improving everything, but now they need the goddamn roof. <laughs> uh, guys, uh, thank you. I'm going to ask you one single thing because I, I've got uh, a, a couple of French Opens to spare. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't need. I just need you one. Can give me one. And I, I do. Would you give? If I give you a French Open, would you slide me one of your Wimbledon titles? I would quickly. I would, would you do that? Yeah. We would do that. Yeah, we do. We just <laughs> okay, I'll take. I'll take one of deal. each. I want of each. <laughs> Thank you, guys.